So next, we want to have a brief discussion on the stability of alkenes, because they're going to come up in the context of our elimination reactions in a little bit. Uh, and it turns out their stability can be related to how substituted they are. Uh, in this case, your sp2 carbons can be bonded to two groups each, and if all four of those are hydrogens, we say it's unsubstituted. Uh, but as I start replacing hydrogens with carbon chains, and it doesn't matter if they're methyl, ethyl, propyl, whatever, but just I start replacing each of those four hydrogens sequentially with carbon chains. So here, one out of four positions of carbon, we call that monosubstituted. If two out of the four positions are carbon chains, we'll call that disubstituted, and we'll see that you can have both cis and trans. So, and then if three out of those four positions are carbons, we'll call that trisubstituted. And if all four of the groups attached to those two sp2 carbons are carbon chains, we'll call it tetra-substituted. So and it turns out the more substitutes, more stable, and that's why I've got them going to lower energy here. Uh, if you also look between cis and trans, trans is more stable than cis, and that's purely a steric thing. Uh, your, car your large, bulky carbon chains are farther apart. Um, so the big rule here is that the more substitute alkene is the more stable, and it's due to something we visited before called hyperconjugation. Now we looked at hyperconjugation, and hyperconjugation was related to uh, carbocation stability as well, and we're seeing it's alkene stability here uh, also, so if we take a look at one of these here for just a second, and so I'm going to bond this to a bunch of hydrogens, and then to one methyl group. So if we kind of map out what the carbon-carbon pi bond looks like, it is the sideways overlap of p orbitals here. And so we get a little bit of overlap here and a little bit of overlap here. That's your pi bond. So, well, it turns out when you've got these, uh, a bond to a carbon here, you've got molecular orbitals that look like so. And it turns out you get a little bit of overlap here as well. That leads to a little bit of delocalization of electron density across the molecule. That lowers the energy of the molecule, and it's this delocalization that we refer to as hyperconjugation. It's not technically resonance or anything like that, but it is delocalization. We call it hyperconjugation. It's how we explain uh, why the more substitute alkene is the more stable alkene.